Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I'd like to discuss the differences between these different types of stamps. We have a wood mounted stamp, a clear stamp set, and a cling stamp set. And I just kind of want to go over what are the differences and the pros and cons of each. The wood mounted stamp used to be the most popular stamp that you would see, and I think there's still a lot of people out there that prefer wood mounted over any other type of stamp. They come with a detailed impression on the rubber. It's a very deeply etched impression, so it gives a great impression each and every time. In between the rubber is a foam, and that is attached to the wood block. The downside of wood mounted stamps is the storage. They take up a lot of room to store these. So I think that's the only downfall to these. Um, also, as opposed to clear mounted stamps, you can't quite see where you're stamping. So there is a little bit of guesswork in it, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. Then we also have, I have an example here from Lawn Fawn, and they use photopolymer clear stamps, which photopolymer polymer clear stamps are the best clear stamps that are out there. They give a nice impression. They're, you can get either photopolymer or acrylic stamp sets, and um, they just give a, a very nice deep impression not quite as detailed usually than the wood mounted stamps, but you can get a great impression from these. Also another thing about clear stamps is you usually get quite a few images as you can see here. So it's you get a lot for your money and they're usually a little bit cheaper than the wood mounted stamps. The third kind that we have here is the cling mounted stamps. This one is by Penny Black, and as you can see, it's the, the rubber as you see on the wood mounted stamps, and it also has that layer of foam. The difference is, is this attaches straight to an acrylic block. So it's kind of the best of both wood mounted and clear. You can see closer to where you're stamping, um, but it doesn't take up all the room that a wood mounted stamp takes up. So let's stamp out a few of these so we can discuss a little bit more in detail. With the cling mounted stamp and the clear stamp, you need to use an acrylic block. And there are tons on the market to choose from. A very large one that I like to use is this Fisker Stamp Press. This is a great um, tool to use. It has little foam legs, so when you attach either your clear or cling mount, you can kind of move it around and, and get it right to the spot that you need before you stamp it down. So I tend to use this a lot. They also have all different sizes of acrylic blocks. You don't want a very large stamp or acrylic block, excuse me, for a very tiny stamp like this cherry on there. You can use it, but it's just easier to use a much smaller block, like this one for instance. So it's great to have a good variety in your stash just to use for whatever you need. So the first thing I'm going to stamp out will be this wood mounted stamp. I'm going to use some VersaFine black ink and just ink that up very well. You kind of want to check it to make sure it looks like you've covered it all well with ink. And you just want to press it down and give it some good firm pressure. Now because of that foam in between, you're going to get a great, great impression every time. The foam gives just slightly so it presses into your paper. And as you can see, that's a perfect impression. So now what I do is just keep baby wipes on hand and I get the cheap alcohol free kind from either the dollar store or Walmart and that's what I use to clean all three different types of stamps. So I just quickly clean that off and then can set this aside. And now let me show you on the clear stamps. Again this one is from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to use this acrylic block. 
With the clear stamps, you just want to, especially if they're a larger stamp, you want to take it off your backing sheet and just set it down on your work surface. And it will take the original shape that it comes in. So if it gets skewed a little, it'll automatically go right back into sh to shape or form. And then just pick it up with your acrylic block. So I'm going to ink it up. And with clear stamps, I like to use, being that it doesn't have the foam, I like to use something underneath. You can use a notebook pad, you can use a mouse pad, or you can use a foam stamp pad. So I have a foam stamp pad here that I've had for a very long time, and you just want to set that under your work surface so when you're inking and stamping, it'll, it'll have that little bit of give to give you a nicer impression. So I'm just going to stamp that down. You don't have to push very hard with clear stamps. And as you can see, it's a perfect impression. Now, if you've never used a stamp before, like, let's see here, this little cupcake topper, I've never used this one before. So I'm going to set that down. I'll use a tinier acrylic block. I'll pick that up. If you've never used one before, you want to condition it before using it for the first time on your project. So what that means is just stamp it off a few times. So I'm just going to stamp it several times. What I have found with Lawn Fawn is you pretty much get a perfect impression every time, but other clear stamps, you do want to stamp them several times. It'll get any residue that may be on there and make sure that it's clean and ready to go for your project. So just keep that in mind when you're using a stamp set for the first time. Let me stamp another one here for an example later on. And now I'm going to stamp out a few more from this Bake Me a Cake stamp set. Here's the next size. Again, I'm just gonna place that down on my surface, pick it up with my acrylic block, make sure it's inked up very well. And with an acrylic stamp or clear stamp, you can see right through it. So I can see that my ink is on the entire stamp. When it comes to a rubber stamp, I have to to, after I ink it up, I have to turn it over and make sure that it's inked up very well. And the other benefit to the, the clear stamps is I can look over it and stamp it down exactly where I want it, and I can get a perfect matchup, or I can line it up perfectly to where I want it. So I'm going to do that just one more time here. Ink it up. Excuse me if my head gets in the way. And then just kind of lean over it and be able to look and see exactly how to match it up. So that's the benefit of, one of the benefits of clear stamps. For the clean mount stamps, again, you put them right to your acrylic block. I'm going to use my larger Fisker stamp press, and it just simply sticks right down. Now, not all stamps come with the image on back. Like, you can see the image right through here, so I can pretty much see where I'm going to stamp this. Some stamps do not have the image on the back. This one has a release paper, so you take that off and stick it right to your acrylic block. But they cut it so closely to the image that you really don't need that image on the back. It does seem to help a little bit, but it's not necessary. Either way works great. So when it's a larger stamp like this, I like to take my ink pad to the stamp itself and make sure that I get a good inking of my image. And now I can pretty much see where I want this to go. So I'm just going to press down and a larger image, you kind of want to run your fingers across the entire image to make sure that you're pressing down on every part of it. And look how pretty that is. 
So again, I'll clean this off the exact same way. Just take a baby wipe to it. And then it goes right back onto your backing sheet. So these are great for storage. And now I want to show you with a clear stamp, if I'm using a really tiny image, I'm going to use this little high from the big, uh, excuse me, Our Friendship Grows stamp set from Lawn Fun. And I'm going to add that to my acrylic block. And now with the acrylic or the clear stamp, I can see right through it where I want it to stamp. Now, if say, I got a little bit of ink. Hopefully you can see that. Let me. I got a little bit of ink on my acrylic block and it looks like I just got it on my paper. But if you say you're stamping it down and it rocks a little and you get it on your acrylic block like that, you may not get it on your project. You may not have to worry about it, but I like to take a baby wipe and just wipe that off just to ensure that I don't ruin my project. So now that that's wiped off, I can hold it right over my image and be able to see exactly where I'm stamping. And that's the benefit of one of the benefits of a clear stamp. I was able to stamp that exactly where I want. Another example of that is here's another stamp set from Martha Stewart. And I'm going to use this oval stamp and a little bit larger block. I'll place that on my block. And I'm going to stamp this out a few times to show you a couple different samples. Okay, so here is this Thinking of You wood mounted stamp. It has the sentiment Thinking of You with the little flowers, but quite a while ago I cut off the little flowers because I just needed and wanted the sentiment Thinking of You. So if I was going to center that in the middle of this oval, first of all I'm going to ink it up. I'll check my stamp to make sure it looks like I've got ink all over it. And now it's kind of I kind of have to guess where it's going to line up or if I'm going to get it straight. So I have to kind of bend down and look and then press it down and hope that it's straight. So it's not too bad. It's a little over to the left, a little too much. I think I would um, move it over to the right but as you and, and maybe a tad higher. But as you can see, it's, it's somewhat of a guessing game with that. With a clear stamp, you can see exactly where you want it to go. So I'll use this happy birthday sentiment, again from the, the Bake Me a Cake. I'll ink that up. And now I can see exactly where it's going to stamp. And now I got it exactly where I wanted it to stamp. The other two things I really like about clear stamps is they can be manipulated. So for example, this happy birthday stamp, if I did not want it stacked on top of one another the way it comes, I can take some sharp scissors and cut straight in between the word happy and the word birthday. And that way I can get two stamps out of it. So that way if I want them next to each other, I can do that. And if you ever want to restack them, they will line back up perfectly. So I've done that with several stamps and you really get more use out of your stamps that way by cutting them. One other thing I want to show you when it comes to the wood stamps is to me if you're going to use wood stamps having a stamp a majig is a must have in your stash. This is a little um, L shaped leg I guess you could say and it comes with a clear plastic sheet and what you do is set this down on your work surface take your clear plastic sheet and 
position it right in that little crease. So right against this portion and this portion. So I'm going to set that down and I'm going to press it right into that corner. Okay, and you wanna make sure that they are pressed right up against each other. And then you want to ink your stamp up, take your wood block and do the exact same thing. Sandwich it right in between this L shape here and press it straight down. And you don't have to worry if this is a perfect impression or not. It's still going to help you position your stamp where you need it. So now I'm gonna take this to my work surface. And as you can see, I can see right through this plastic sheet to get the thinking of you exactly where I want. So I'm going to make sure that it's centered right where I want. Once it is, I'm going to again align my positioner right into that corner. And once I'm happy with it, I can move the plastic out of the way. You don't want this to move. Re-ink your stamp up. Double check it, make sure it looks like your ink is, is on there very well. And press it into that corner again. Press it down, you can move that and make sure you have a good impression. And now you will have lined it up exactly where you want the stamp to go. So wood stamps are great if you don't mind the storage part. But to me, in order to work with wood stamps, I have to have a stamp a jig in my stash. That way, I don't have to worry if my project is not perfect. And then you just want to clean off your plastic sheet the same way you do your stamps. Just take a baby wipe to it and it'll come clean. There is one last thing I'd like to show you. I have this stamp here. I don't know who it's by. I've had it for a very long time. And it is a long border stamp. When you're using a long border stamp, you want to just set it down on your surface and again, it will take the original form that it was in. So that way you can take an acrylic block and pick it up and we're gonna go ahead and ink it. and I'll press that down. So one of the things that I like about it is that I can curve this border stamp. And you just want to press it down on your, your acrylic block however you want it shaped. So if you're trying to go around an image or you just want something different, I'm just curving it and pressing it down as I go to get the shape that I want. You wanna really press it down to get it to stay once you have it where you want. So now let me go ahead and ink that up. And stamp that down. So as you can see, it looks like a, a different stamp or you can manipul manipulate them however you'd like. I can even this stamp might be a little bit harder to do, but I can even get it into a somewhat circle, maybe more of an oval. <laughs> but you just really want to work at it and just kind of press it as you go. It may want to come up on you and that's fine. Just keep working at it. You'll also find that different brands stick differently than others. Like this one does not stick as well as others that I've used, but I can get this one to stick. I have before. So there we go. It's not a perfect circle by any means, but you'll be able to get the idea. So there you have it. You can see that you can manipulate them. So there are several differences between the three type of stamps. But there's no wrong or right on which is best. It's all in preference and what you like to use. So I hope this clears up any questions that you may have had. If you do have any questions, please leave me a comment and please check out Cut at Home's blog or you'll find lots of inspiration on there. Thanks so much for watching.